as promised, we're talking about IQIYI. Uh, this is a stock, you know, most formally known as IQ, one of the uh, meme stocks of last year. One that, uh, shoot, this thing was a wild, hot fire. Just a hot fire. Um, after IPO, it launched up past $40, and it's been a bumpy ride ever since then. This thing trades very volatile. And recently, it's been hovering around the $18 range. So, um, uh, this is stock I used to hold. I don't anymore, but uh, down 4% after hours after these earnings. So, we'll take a look at this. Uh, my initial expectations, as I mentioned on my video uh, detailing uh, the earnings for the week, I thought that the EPS line would get hit for sure. But I really mentioned that I think they should benefit in terms of subscribers pretty well. And I'd like to look at those numbers. And I think they should also uh, benefit pretty well just based off of uh, a revenue perspective because they should have more subscribers should bring in more revenue for them uh, I hate to say I was slightly disappointed um, not massively disappointed but I, I wanted better numbers gap EPS of a negative 56 cents a line that's bad uh, missed by two cents but this company hasn't been profitable for right it's never been so that's not an unexpected number missed by only two cents isn't isn't horrific. It's just a not good, not a Gavi BS standpoint. So I'd really like to look at uh, um, what this company's, you know, bringing home as far as their balance sheet. We'll look at that because can they sustain that massive losses every quarter? We'll see. With a parent company like Baidu, they can. Uh, I mean, obviously, Baidu's got plenty of money on the balance sheet, but we're talking about this company just as a, you know, a public company of its own, right? Um, that revenue line, I wanted to be a little bit bigger. I, I really did want to see a little bit more than a 10% year-over-year gain. Not like, I mean, that's a good number. 10% year-over-year is very massive gain. But I wanted to see a little bit better of a number personally. Um, so I'm not too disappointed. But I think investors felt the same way, and I think that's why the stock is down. So uh, total revenues came in at $7.6 billion. Yuan, um, Yuan, heard by industry-wide advertising slump, and that's, you know, not as unexpected. We, we see it here hitting us more recently, and we're probably a couple months behind uh, China in terms of everything going on with, with this pandemic, too, so it makes sense. They were hit further, or earlier, I would say, so this quarter was more impacted by the pandemic and had uh, shortages, so... Operating loss of around three hundred sixteen point six million um, from a year ago, where they had a two billion yuan loss, so they actually increased their loss um, year over year. Don't like that um, net loss. Net loss of four hundred six million, which is two point nine billion yuan, uh, and a year ago loss of one point eight. So that was ah, adding one billion yuan to that loss. Um, it's not good. Um, it's not. That's not good. I mean, I mean what, what more can I say to you? Uh, what can I say except you're welcome? Uh, so, it's not a beautiful number. I mean, what can I say? That loss isn't beautiful. Total subscribers were at 118.9 million, up 12 million from last quarter, and up 23% year over year. About 99.2 of them were paying subscribers. That is a very good number, actually, all things considered. 99.2% being paying subscribers, very nice. But 23% um, year over year, not incredible. But when you have a subscriber base of around 118 million, that's pretty big. But a company in China, you think about the population there, the market is so much bigger. So for them to only have claimed 119 or 100, yeah, really 119 million right now at this point, the market's massive out there for them. So I'd like to see growth rates a little bit faster, and that's really why their initial IPO launch was just so successful because they had that fast, very fast growth rate in terms of uh, subscribers, and that's kind of fallen by the wayside for them. They, they've slowed down quite a bit. 20% uh, growth year over year still. Big, big numbers, but it's not nearly what it was before, and that's why the stock's been hovering around 18 and it hasn't moved that much in the past year. Um, or past several months, I should say, I guess. It did have one little boost up, and that's when I sold out of my position. 
It's one that I held for quite a while, and I was down it for the longest time, and I finally got up on it, and I sold out. So don't get mad at me. Um, revenue breakdown for membership services up 35%. Online advertising was down 27%. That's that ad rate hitting you. Content distribution up 29%, and other was down 9%. For quarter two, it's guiding uh, total uh, net revenues of uh, 1.02 1.08 billion, around two to eight percent up year over year. Mm, would like not better numbers than that too. I would, but I can't be picky, right? Um, I will try not to be picky. So let's look at this uh, report from them. Uh, membership services. Uh, the increase was primarily a, uh, uh, attributable. To growth in the number of subscribing members. What a shocker. As I mentioned, the more subscribers you have, you get more money in. Not a shocker at all. Um, very cool for them. Online advertising services, 27% uh, decline. The decrease was due to the challenging macroeconomic environment related to the pandemic. People didn't want to pay for advertisements. They weren't advertising. Their businesses were not doing business. Um, they were shut down. So that's really why... Ad rates fell. Content distribution revenue, um, the growth was primarily uh, attributable to the increase in high quality content, which fulfilled distribution uh, to several platforms during the quarter. Other revenue, primarily due to the soft performance of certain business lines, particularly offset by the growth in game business. Pretty nice. Uh, all things considered, nothing too, too crazy. Um, content costs were uh, up 11% too, so that's a scary number to look at as that keeps going up. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, SGA expenses were up 15% too. Don't necessarily like to see that. Expenses rising, and that's why you saw a wider loss, so it's not unexpected, but... Um, you want to see a bigger growth story when you're seeing the loss widen quite a bit. Uh, you don't really want your loss to widen just even a little bit more than your, or really more um, than your revenue, in my perspective at least. Maybe I'm insane, but you don't want to increase loss more than you increase revenue. That's kind of how the game works. Uh, that's, ooh, I don't like that. Um... Yeah, we don't like we don't like this bullet point here. Uh, talking about operating loss, eh. um, let's see, let's see. Finally, I think we look at uh, the. Uh, you know what we're looking at. Come on, I don't even need to mention it. You know what I scroll to every time. The balance sheet. How many quarters is this company going to survive losing four hundred uh, million dollars a quarter? Right, and we're talking U.S. dollars, of course. Um, oh, they're not giving me U.S. dollars on this, you dirty, dirty dogs. Um, so that means we're gonna real quick scroll back up and take a look at what that loss was. Uh, loss was 2.9 billion yuan. That's right, you can't trick me. Um, all right, we're thinking around 2.9 billion a quarter. How much can they survive? All right, let's get to that balance sheet. So. Um, Shoot, I got hiccups out of nowhere. Sorry about that. Uh, let's look at this most recent quarter. Darn it, you hiccups. Um, cash and cash equivalents has actually decreased quite a decent bit. Um, you know, right around uh, two and a half billion uh, two and a half billion yuan in terms of decrease there. But you saw an increase in short-term investments and an increase in accounts receivable. Pretty nice. Uh, overall total current assets so did decrease quarter over quarter. Uh, total assets in general decreased quarter over quarter as well by about one uh, billion yuan. So they've got 43 billion uh, yuan in terms of total assets. Total liabilities you see a uh, <laughs> total liability number of 36.1 billion yuan which increased one billion as well um, in the quarter. I don't like the balance sheet on this company personally. Um, I think this was slightly an overhyped stock, and I don't think that's unfair to say at all. And I think now investors have realized that, and that's why it's been struggling. 
Um, overall, if you're looking at it, they're going to have more liability on their plate. Uh, absolutely more liability on their plate than they do in terms of assets. Pretty soon, if you're talking about $3 billion you want to loss in, in a quarter, um, it's going to take them, you know, a solid three quarters, and they're going to have more liability than loss, uh, or liability than assets, I should say. So the thing about this company is they are 100% funded, and I mean, for the most part, their parent company, Baidu, has so much cash on hand, it's crazy, right? They, they have so much cash, and they generate cash, actually. So it's not like the company's going to completely evaporate from it. I mean, they have a parent company that will support them. So the value, though, is the question is, where do you find a value point for this stock? It's a stock that loses money hand over fist and doesn't show signs of improving. So where do you value this? Um, it's hard to find value in it, right? Uh, it's something that, it's it just depends. Market cap right now trading at $13.4 billion with revenue annualized of around $4 billion. It's not like... A, at this rate, not absurdly overvalued, uh, but the question is, with increasing loss more than your revenue at the moment, where is the room for you know progression on this stock? What's going to get the investors back in this thing? I don't know if there's much exciting right now to uh, get investors back in, and I think it'll be hovering around this $18 range for quite a while, unfortunately. Um, I mean, it was hovering around the $18 range for a, a good bit here. Uh, we're talking from May 2019 all the way to freaking uh, November 2019, and then it finally jumped up. And I, you know, I sold out this February. Good move, by the way. I made a good move. Otherwise, I would have been down another 30 percent, and I would have been stuck with this thing. But I sold at a good loss, or a, it, sorry, a good gain. Ugh, gosh, that's why you hold stocks for the long term, baby. But um, I think it's going to be hovering around the 18 dollar range, and I think that's really fair value for this thing right around now. Um, I don't think there's really anything that's pushing this to deserve a very high valuation in my perspective. And my voice didn't crack. I'm a man and I have cojones, okay? Do not, please don't make fun of me again. I'm sorry. <laughs>